Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for September 28th, 2023. Well, my goodness, yesterday was quite a ride as we started the morning up, and then those bears came in and pushed us right back down. We are oversold. We're looking for some kind of a relief rally, but with all the pending data, that we have, there's just this palpable uncertainty. And then of course, even if the data is really good, we might have a muted response to the market just simply because of the pending government shutdown that is on the way. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. I do truly appreciate it. Hey, I need to make a little announcement. Um, tomorrow, there will not be a morning market prep video. Um, I'm taking a day off, and so <laughs> I will be back on Monday. No worries there. I'll be back on next Monday, but tomorrow I'll be taking a day off. I'm uh, going to go uh, get some miles underneath my feet and do a little bit of hiking and um, rub a little nature on me to um, kind of wash off some of the um, office time that I've been uh, dealing with and de-stress just a little bit. But I'll be back on Monday, no worries there. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might approach the market for today. Well, as you can see, we had a pretty rough day yesterday pushing down here um, and then leaving a nice little tail on that that gives us that hope that we could get a little bit of relief rally. Overnight, we were pushing up, but unfortunately, um, Asian markets reversed mostly lower last night. Um, European markets are lower this morning. And so we've got that little bit of uncertainty coming into the market open today. Um, let's take a look. If the bulls were to find inspiration, where could we go in here? As you can see, holding the support level, and we've got a massive amount of congestion and price action in the chart up here. But if we take a look at our moving averages, you can see there's a 200-day moving average up there that could draw us up toward that 200-day. Unfortunately, our short-term moving averages like the 8 exponential are pushing down, could soon cross down, maybe today, cross down through that 200-day and notice that our longer terms are starting to roll over. So we have quite a bit of pressure here going on in the market, but that 200 day moving average may draw us higher. Now, if I were to uh, place that on the chart, it's going to be, by the way, if you look right here, it's right above the last two days of black candles, right in there in that little mix. So I would probably put right in here as a potential upside target if we can get a relief rally. If we can push up through that area of the chart right there, then I suspect we would have that opportunity that we could continue to push and test this bigger resistance level in the chart. And you can see that as a substantial area of price resistance that we're now going to have to deal with um, trying to come back to the upside. So keep an eye on that. Now, keeping in mind that if the bears were to find inspiration today, and we do have data that could potentially do that, well, then I would suggest a retest of this low could be a possibility. And if that were to fail, well, you can see this red line down here. I think that could be the next place we're going. And although this is a very oversold condition in the market, data can certainly continue to drive us in that direction with so much uncertainty that we see in the market right now. Let's take a look at our SPY. SPY, boy, what a straight line drop that we've had in the SPY. Nice little hammer pattern yesterday. So if the bulls can find that inspiration, by the way, if you guys remember, I said if we don't hold the top side of this little area right in here, we're likely to move down into there. And unfortunately, you'll notice right in here, there's not much price support. There is just not much price support. That's one of the things about this all or nothing market where we race in and chase to the upside and then we, when we start selling, it's everybody runs for the door at the same time. And as you can see, there's just not a lot of support in there. So if this doesn't hold, if the bears can push on through, my suggestion is we're very likely 
to seek out the 200 day moving average. We're not that far away now from that 500 and 200 day moving average and that possibility that we drop down in here to that bigger level of price support in the chart seems like a pretty good possibility. The odds are improving on that, particularly if the data comes in bad for us. So watch that carefully. If the bears were to continue to push here and we start to falter, look for us moving down into these levels of the chart and maybe testing the 200 day moving average in the SPY. If the bulls, however, find inspiration, well, let's look for a retest. We might push this back up right into here just right to the top side of that little tiny level right there, um, trying to pick up um, a little bit. And then if we can move through that area, I think right up in here would be the next level to potentially test. Of course, above that, we're starting to look right here at the August lows. And then of course that green line up here, which we need to retest as a resistance level. Obviously some, uh, some substantial technical damage has been created in these charts and we've got a lot of work to recover with an awful lot of uncertainty ahead of us, um, not just um, uh, economic data wise, but political wise and um, straight up uh, government wise right now so watch that carefully our QQQ our QQQ the strongest of the indexes um, at the moment we did sink down below the August low so we did officially create a lower high lower low that says downtrend uh, but we did bounce up back at the end of the day and we're trying to hold that here this morning and you can see that August low is going to be very very important because if you notice here we also don't have a whole lot of price support we zoomed up here so fast that we don't have a whole lot of price support um, in this area. So if the bears were to find inspiration today and push on lower and we drop into this area, we might find a little bit of support. But if that were to fail, it's a really sharp potential drop. And that 200 day moving average here in the QQQ is a long ways down there. This would be a very painful uh, pullback if we come into that 200 day moving average. So watch that carefully. There's not much price support in here if um, we start to fail this level right through here. Now, if the bulls can find inspiration, hold this level in here and start pushing back up, where could we go? Well, I think that um, area of the chart is probably right up in here initially to see if we can pop this little level right through here kind of push back through that August low. And then if we can pop on through there, then we start looking for these upper levels and maybe pushing up here into this gap to find these extra levels here in strongest of the indexes, but also one of the most susceptible indexes to the rising bonds that just are not relieving. They are continuing to be very pesky out there Lots of pressure on those bonds, and that's creating some issues here in the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now, our IWM starting to get a little bit of relief. Now, this is the most oversold index in the market. We're way below our 200-day moving average. Notice that our 34 EMA right here, 20 moving average is about ready to cross through the 200. That's not a good sign here. That's starting to create a major resistance level up in here if we rally back. Notice our 50 day moving average is coming down pretty hard as well. If you take a look in here, if the bulls can continue to find some inspiration um, in this chart, I would suggest maybe we push up. You can see we've got this little gap right in here push up into that region first to see if we can recover. There's that big white candle right there where we tried to bounce and then reversed. So somewhere right in there might be a little bit of level to be paying attention to. And if we can push through that, then we're back up here on this red line, which is a very, very big level of price resistance in the chart that we'll want to be watching pretty closely. Now, if the bears, if the bears find um, inspiration here today, you'll notice that if we look across here, we're trying to find a little bit of support through all of this congestion, but there really is no hard line in there. So if the bears were to continue to find inspiration here, I'm gonna suggest we test some of these areas right down here. Notice we've got these price support levels in here. And again, if that fails, 
we might be down here. So we cannot rule that out with a way um, that, with so much uncertainty that we see in the market. So kind of keep in mind that although we are very oversold and we are overdue for a relief rally, if the data continues to pile on, that could be a problem for us. Let's take a look at our VIX. Well, our VIX popped yesterday, moved a little bit higher, but ended up pulling back. We closed um, right in here around this 1850 handle of the VIX. Notice that's a pretty good thing to see happen because that pushes us back down through some of these um, areas of the chart. So if the bulls can continue to find inspiration here today, we're going to look for that to continue that pullback in here. Maybe we test the level down in here start relieving some of that fear in the market. But keep in mind, if we can't relieve a bunch of this fear, we could still put in that higher low here. And that's where the real panic can come into the market if we create a higher low and start pushing on up. So watch that closely. And if the bears find inspiration in the data today and push on through, this is gonna be critical. If we push back up through here and hold this, as the higher low. Yeah, look out. Um, that could be a little bit of a problem for the market. Let's take a look at our T2122. Boy, T2122 continues to signal a very oversold condition here in the market. It is interesting that we popped up a little bit yesterday on that move. We're not getting much for follow through here this morning, however. So watch that closely. With that pop up here, we still have that possibility once again, that we can continue to linger in this area if the data is not good and that pushback down could be possible. But if the bulls can find that inspiration today in some of the data, perhaps we can start pushing back up through this level, relieving some of that pressure, which I know everyone is hoping for because boy, it's been kind of a painful sell-off here in the market. So watch carefully for that. T2122, remember, doesn't tell us the direction of the market. It shows us those pressure points. And we are definitely in an oversold condition here. And we should catch a relief rally beginning at any time if the data helps support that and that uncertainty of the government shutdown doesn't continue to drive those bears. Let's take a look at our T2108. Our T2108 had a little bit of relief in it yesterday, but you gotta admit it really wasn't enough to get you too excited overall. We did pop up 24 and a quarter percent of the stocks above their 40 day moving average. We got, um, uh, a little bit of a break above this area here, which is nice. And that might mean if we can continue to find that relief, we can push up here and start testing some of these resistance levels in the chart. Watch that closely. If the bears find inspiration here today and we were to reverse back to the downside, we still have some support underneath here under recent times. You can see we could go even lower, but we've got some support under here that hopefully could catch us if those bears push us on lower. Uh, that head and shoulders pattern in here that we were talking about certainly is playing out. And I know no one wanted to see that, but there it is. And it is not working for us very well in the market. Same thing is happening on the T2107. T2107 was pretty flat yesterday. Didn't really get a whole lot going in there. Not a lot of energy. That head and shoulders in here continuing to play out in this chart, a lot of destruction coming on. The good news is if the bears continue to push, we have a pretty good support level down in here. Maybe we could bounce off of that. And if the bulls can find inspiration, well, maybe we start challenging some of these areas up in here, maybe coming back up into this downtrend area of that chart, relieving some of that pressure. We're certainly overdue for that. We'll just see if the data can support it and if we can get enough enthusiasm to get that going here um, as we wait for a government decision. Um, let's take a look at our T2101. This is kind of unfortunate that T2101 continued to expand to the upside when we were selling. As soon as the buyers started coming in, notice we hooked here just a little tiny bit. Now what we don't wanna see is we don't wanna see on a relief rally that our breadth collapses. We wanna see that that market breadth continues to surge in here on the buy wave. 
Watch that carefully. We're running into this um, area of the chart where it has been signaling that once we get up in here, our market breadth begins to fade and that tends to be on the buy wave so we'll want to watch that carefully let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and our economic calendar well this is what we've been kind of worried about and we'll be talking about here going forward um, we've got that gdp number here this morning now looking at the consensus in here if it comes in as a consensus that may be okay for the market consensus is looking at a 2.3 in here that's a little bit of a um, growth over the 2.1 we'll want to watch that closely remember Fed wants to see the market slowing down. So if this gains too much, that's going to be negative for the market. Watch that closely. Personal consumption expenditures, we're looking at that staying exactly flat. That might be a little bit of a problem here because we are starting to see consumers are pulling back. So just be a little bit careful there and watch that one closely. Then we've got the jobless claims. This has been really problematic for us because we continue to see that jobs market very hot. And unfortunately, the Fed doesn't have very good tools to deal with a hot jobs market. The only thing they can really do is tamp down the economy and slow the economy and make it so that more people get forced off into unemployment. That has not been working yet. And we continue to see that problem with the wage price spiral that is going on, potentially reinflating um, or, or reigniting that inflation here in the market. So watch that carefully. Consensus is looking for 211. That is not much of an increase. Notice that our initial claims last time, negative 20,000. We need to see that start creeping up to make the Fed happy. If the Fed's not happy, more rate increases are likely. And so watch that close. After that, we've got corporate profits. That'll be important to watch. We've got a bunch of Fed speak here today. We've got um, um, pending home sales that, of course, will be um, a moving event, potential moving event. Natural gas report. We are going to get Kansas City Fed manufacturing numbers in here. We've got some bond auctions. Cook is going to be speaking a seven-year bond auction. And then we've We've got Jerome Powell speaking here right at the close of the day. So watch that Fed balance sheet and more Fed speak into uh, the evening. You can see right here, moving into th Friday, I'm covering this because I'm not going to be here. We're going to all of a sudden, as soon as we get past this, we're going to be probably thinking about this. That's going to be the personal um, incomes and outlays. This is the Fed's favorite number, the core PCE number. If you remember last time on the core PCE number, we saw those short term, month over month, we saw an increase coming into play. If that increase starts playing into this core PCE number and we start to see this move back higher, that's going to be a problem. We need to see this continue to decline. If it does, that could inspire the market on Friday higher, um, provide a little bit of relief, assuming we're not too focused on the potential government shutdown. So watch that closely. We also have another issue the UAW is threatening that they're going to expand. Once again, expand their auto workers strike to more, uh, more factories. Um, if an, an agreement isn't achieved by Friday. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of things that the market is having to deal with. We're also going to have international trading goods, Chicago PMI, consumer sentiment. We've been seeing those sentiment numbers coming down. So uh, watch those closely on Friday while I'm gone. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar here for today. Now our earnings calendar, we've got a few notables here that we want to be paying attention to. First off, um, let me um, remind everyone, MU reported yesterday, one of the tech sector stocks in there. And uh, well, we've got a little bit of a bad response here this morning on MU. So kind of keep that in mind. That may be hampering a little bit of the um, uh, well, um, excitement about the next quarter earnings that's set to begin here in a couple of weeks. So just 
yeah, kind of keep that in mind. Um, it wasn't the best kind of report for that tech sector. Um, but today we've got CAN that we'll be reporting. Keep an eye on that. Obviously very bearish chart here in the market right now. It needs some kind of inspiration to start picking it up. Um, we've got BlackBerry that we'll be reporting. Been on a pretty strong sell-off here heading into the earnings. Could be a very telling report um, in this chart. Uh, KMX, KMX reporting this morning. As you can see, that's looking a little bit lower. Looks like we're making some decisions here on KMX. And again, some of these consumer stocks are showing lots of pressure. That's a big break of a support level there. Next level would be down in here, and we're maybe headed there all at once here this morning in the pre-market. So watch that closely. We've got JBL, another consumer um, uh, company here that will be reporting kind of watch that carefully holding in here on support that could be very very important and then another Nike will be reporting this has just been abysmal here as this continues to move down we're quickly approaching some uh, you know our <laughs> big levels of price support in here um, as we continue to fall. This is a, a massive failure in here, and this will be a very important report to decide whether Nike, if the consumers are strong enough to start pushing this back up or if this continues to falter. And then MTN will be reporting Vail Resorts, and you can see it's been selling off. Heading into its earnings report, very choppy, very just all over the place. A lot of uncertainty, a little support in here. I think anything is possible in MTN. So watch that one today. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please do me that favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I apologize. It was kind of a crazy day. I didn't get to answering those comments yesterday. Um, I did read them all. I will be back on that task here today, if at all possible. I got another very, very hectic day here today, but hopefully um, everything will work out and I'll be able to answer those. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Thank you so much who take the time to do that. Um, and thank you so much uh, for those who just leave an emoji. Um, that's all you need to do to show that engagement with the video. So thank you, everyone. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. Remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you've got to do your own due diligence. Be very careful in this market. There's so much uncertainty. It may be the best course of action to just sit on the sidelines and protect that capital and wait until we start to see some better signals. But that being said, I know that's hard for a lot of folks to do so let's take a look and see if there's something out there that we could grab a hold of well first off I've got to continue um, it seems like this is a broken record here but I got to continue talking about um, uh, the uranium plays here uh, CCJ very very strong um, Resting and consolidating here, pulling back. I, I continue to think this is going to get a major pullback here eventually, but right now, just resting out here to trend, I would look for the next opportunity um, in that chart. If I go um, 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 out here and use a weekly chart, you can see we have targets up here that we could certainly be reaching out for in CCJ. So keep a close eye on that. It's looking really good. URA continues to hold in there very strong on its upside trend. No reason to believe at this point that that is going to change. It's holding up very, very nicely. I'd keep an eye on that. And of course, you, 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 you also looking really good in here, holding up very, very well uh, for that upside move. Hey, I would, I hate to say this because I hold physical gold and silver, but I talked about the possibility here recently that gold could be ready to really drop. Boy, it did yesterday. It came in down hard. And I think there's a possibility gold, after breaking this support, is going to come down into these areas of the chart, maybe down into the one um, upper 160 areas 
of um, that. So potential short on any rally back, you might want to look at gold or GLD for a potential short. It's not looking good at all here. And I would have to say the same. Silver setting right here on a major area of support. But I got to tell you, the way we're looking here in this chart, very possible this could start breaking through this support and moving on lower, uh, particularly if we continue to see that dollar strengthening. We got a little pullback in that dollar this morning um, trying to happen here. So that may relieve some of that pressure. But watch that carefully. We have just seen that dollar zoom to the upside. And the reason that's occurring, folks, is, is uh, partially bond yields. Bond yields are continuing to help push that up. It's creating the cost of the dollar move up. But also, we're seeing weakening of currencies in several countries around the world. And we price our dollar based on those other currencies. So um, as those currencies continue to weaken, that makes the dollar stronger. And this is also putting an awful lot of undue pressure on um, those foreign com countries because of the reserve currency status that the United States enjoys. So watch that carefully. Now, that being said, we still see, oh my goodness, those numbers yesterday, oil and gas, oil and gas, oil and gas, moving back to the upside in a strong way. Big pop yesterday as we see supplies continuing to decline here in the United States. We're breaking through, holding some support levels, pushing through in that, and there are a lot of stocks in that sector looking good. You might want to take a look at some of the refining sector. Schlumberger had broken this support, but it's recovered that. Look for that next opportunity to get into there. Um, as you guys know, I mentioned Valero um, yesterday. Valero holding in there, trying to push on higher. This may be able to take off here soon. Halliburton um, also um, just making a big move back up here, trying to test some major resistance in this chart. Just imagine if Halliburton pops through here and holds there could be a big upside coming if it can get through that level of resistance up there so keep an eye on some of those oil sector stocks um, actually oil oil provider stocks there's a lot of them looking pretty good take a look at conoco phillips uh, pushing on up pretty tough to find a very bearish chart in the oil sector right now. Now, be, that being said, oil is just ever so slightly lower here this morning in the futures, down just eight cents. So you're going to have to be a little bit careful. Um, I, I got to go back to this because it's still holding in there, even though we had a pretty rough day yesterday on that pullback in KHC. We're still OK in this chart. We're still in that place where we can find that price support and bounce up. I keep an eye on KHC unless we really get some selling here today. This, if, if the bulls come in, I, I could see this potentially bouncing if we can get that relief rally um, in the market. And I would continue to pay attention to AT&T. Now we bid, did break down through this support in the chart but you can see we still have that chance if we can get a relief rally this could pop right back through to the upside and watch that closely on AT&T there are a few other places out there Google had a good day yesterday trying to push up now this is really not in a good buy point if you ask me because we're just pushing right back into a major resistance area of the chart where we could catch that lower high and notice that that would be a head and shoulders pattern. So lots of issues and problems here in some of the tech stocks out there. Be very, very careful. Don't over speculate, particularly with so many uncertainties that we have going on um, heading into the end of this week. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you an awesome day in your trading and I want to wish you great results. Also, have a great day on Friday. Apologize I won't be here, but I will see you right back here Monday morning. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. I wish you all the very, very best.